I'm very, very fortunate. Over the years, I have been able to forge a really good relationship with our team. And I think that is one of the most significant factors in getting good care. You've got to be able to make that relationship with your team. They have to be able to trust you. Your, 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 your loved one's life can actually depend on them being able to trust the information you give with them because after all, you're the one that's there. You're the one that's seeing it. They see them for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, and you're, they're gone. But you're the one that, that really makes the observations. And as we get into the conversation, um, I will tell you exactly how that did, in fact, actually save my husband's life. So you have to make concrete measurements when you speak to people, and that's something I would say to healthcare people as well. You really have to listen and you have to get a, a measurement in your mind so that you really know that you've understood what this person is saying. I've been fortunate in, again, I, I know enough to foster a relationship with my healthcare people. I know how important that is. You have to be more than just one other person that comes into the thing, into the room. You have to be the person that they're going to listen to. And as a caregiver, that's my role. That's what I have to do. Whatever it takes, that's what I have to do. <laughs> there comes a point at that your communication with your caregiver can mean a life or death situation for your loved one. And she did the pet just based on what I said. Well, the pet showed colon cancer. Colon cancer is a cancer that by the time you're diagnosed, you're in stage four and ready to go. It's a, that's why colonoscopies are, are so warranted, and especially with CLL. Well, Bob went through surgery, and everybody said that it was that pet that saved his life. And if I didn't have that communication with his doctor and she didn't listen to me, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, so I tell you that that communication and, and that trust in your, with your, your caregiver, with your, your team is so very important. The CLL team is the doctor, her nurse practitioner, her nurse, and believe it or not, one of the very important people there is the one who answers the telephone. Because when I call, oh, hi, Mrs. Bottega, what can I do for you? And we foster that relationship as much as we can, and I make every effort to extend my appreciation to him in any way I can. I send letters to the CEO of the hospital saying how lucky they are to have him. <laughs> These are the things that I do to keep, make sure that my husband gets the best care that he can. Listen to your doctors. Um, let people help you, um, because people do want to help. Lean on other people, lean on your support system, your, your close girlfriends, um, your family, uh, if, if there are other support systems, whether it's through therapy or groups or you know, through your um, church, just lean on them and, and breathe. Just listen to the doctors and get as much information as you can and, um, and try to process that and then still move forward with your life. You still need to live your life. The other thing you do is you get with a specialist. If you get to a hematologist, hematology and oncology, it's a double qualification. We would have dialogues and I would go with my wife. And in the beginning, we took a recorder. You can use your phone or I had a, just a separate tape recorder. It was so complicated for us to understand what I had that we would record it. We talk about it on the way home. We sit in the house and play it half a dozen times. And I'd say, well, he said this. And she'd say, no, he said that. And, go, and through that learning process, we came to understand what I really do have. But he was, fun to talk with and my appointment would go two and a half to three hours just the two of us and he taught me and I volunteered to help teach other people that he oversaw and we had a great relationship and that's how I started learning about CLL he would share with me stuff when I had something from the support group that was new a new med or a new clinical trial 
I would inform him. And so we had this dialogue going on all the time. 